Jim and Linda live in a lovely American suburb with their daughters Bridget and Megan. They have a wonderful life together, though things have become tense recently because Jim is constantly on business trips. Linda doesn't answer the phone when it rings one afternoon. Jim, who is on another trip, is the one who has left a message. He says he meant what he said in front of the girls the other night and wants Linda to remember it, but he has to hang up because he received another call. Linda does not understand the message and calls him again, but she gets the answering machine and asks Jim to call her back before returning to her chores. This includes placing stickers on the glass windows to prevent accidents. Later, Linda receives a visit from Sheriff Riley, who brings bad news. Jim died in a car accident with a truck yesterday. Linda doesn't understand because she just received his message on the machine, but Riley assures her that it's true, leaving her in shock. Linda, who is crying, walks around the house before going to the school to pick up her daughters, not telling them the news until they are safe at home. Linda's mother Joanne arrives at the house a few hours later to assist her daughter with everything, and Linda calls her best friend Annie for assistance as well, but she is met with the answering machine once more. Joanne sleeps in the guest room that night, but Linda falls asleep on the couch, clutching a wedding photo. Linda awakens in her bed the next morning, dressed differently. She assumes her mother relocated her, but when she goes to check on her, Joanne is no no longer there. Linda goes downstairs when she hears some noises and is surprised to see Jim eating breakfast casually as usual. Linda feels awkward because if it was all a dream, it felt incredibly real, but this is obviously better. Linda checks the answering machine after dropping the girls off at school, but there are no messages. When she goes grocery shopping, she is so distracted that she almost hits another car. Sheriff Riley arrives to check on her and warns her. Linda meets Annie at the store and asks if she received a message from her yesterday, but Annie says no. Linda Linda then returns home to finish up her chores. She begins with the laundry and is surprised to find some clothes she thought she had washed. When she goes to hang the clothes in the garden, she trips on a toy and falls on top of a dead crow, which covers her in blood. Linda rushes to wash her hands and toss the crow in the trash. Linda can't stop staring at Jim later, during dinner and bedtime, because she doesn't believe he's real. Linda wakes up alone in bed the next morning, still wearing Jim's shirt. She discovers many details that further perplex her, a bottle of wine on her nightstand, blankets covering all the mirrors in the house, and a bottle of medicine in the kitchen sink. To make matters worse, when she goes downstairs, she discovers Joanne and Annie are in charge of Jim's funeral arrangements. Linda freaks out because she swears something is wrong, and no one believes her when she says Jim is alive, so she ignores her friend's concerns and goes looking for their daughters. Linda checks on the girls in the garden and is disturbed to see Bridget has scars on her face, despite Megan's belief that she is the most beautiful princess. Bridget asks Linda what it was like when Jim died, and when she says she doesn't know because she wasn't there, Bridget wonders how they know he's dead. Later when the hearse arrives at the cemetery, Linda insists on seeing the body. The funeral workers refuse to open the coffin because Jim was seriously injured in the accident and Linda begins arguing with them because it is her right to see. The employees become nervous and drop the coffin, causing Jim's head to roll out and Linda to collapse. The priest says some words as the coffin is carried to the grave, and Linda notices a woman watching the ceremony from a distance. Linda goes to ask Joanne who it is, but Claire says they already talked yesterday, and leaves in her car, oblivious to the fact that Linda swears she has never seen her before in her life. When the family returns home, Linda examines the medicine bottle and discovers that it was prescribed by Dr. Roth. Linda searches the yellow pages for him and discovers that the corresponding page has been torn off, but just as she is about to give up, she looks away and discovers that the missing page is in the trash. Linda attempts to contact Roth's office, but it is already closed for the day. In the evening, the family is surprised by a strange visitor. Linda doesn't recognize him, but this is Dr. Roth, who has come with Riley to take Linda away on suspicion of intentionally hurting Bridget. Joanne begs her daughter to explain how Bridget got those scares, but Joanne has no recollection and begins to panic at the accusation. Linda is left tied to a bench at the hospital moments later, and she overhears Roth telling Riley that Linda came to see him on Wednesday, knowing her husband would die. This leads Riley to believe Jim's death was not an accident after all. Following that, Roth injects Linda to sleep, ignoring her cries for mercy. Linda awakens in her house the next morning. Jim's back is indicated by noises from the bathroom, and Linda rushes to cling to him under the shower, not caring if she gets wet as well. When the girls awaken, Linda notices that the scars have faded and calls them both her beautiful princesses. Later, she notices a strange odor coming from the trash can and discovers the dead crow is still there, decomposing as if weeks had passed. This 
This makes her nervous, so she rushes inside to find Roth's number, only to discover that it is still intact inside the book. Linda then goes to see Roth, who does not recognize her. She tells him about her visions, and after he checks for any possible mental illnesses, Roth prescribes the same medicine Linda saw on her sink. She then goes to Jim's office to ask him why he doesn't spend more time at home. She wants to go away with him and the girls and have a proper conversation with her husband, but Jim has a meeting. Claire appears at that point and introduces herself to Linda as if she didn't know her, then drives Jim to the meeting. Linda realizes Jim is cheating on her after seeing them together. Linda later decides to flush the medicine down the toilet at home. When a storm hits the area, Linda asks her daughters to assist her in bringing the laundry inside. Bridget runs without paying attention and crashes into the glass window, injuring her entire body. Linda rushes Bridget to the hospital and is soon joined by Jim, who assures her that everything will be fine. Bridget is allowed to go home in the evening. She is healthy, but her face is covered in scars. Linda covers all of the house's mirrors so Bridget can't see herself and tells both of her daughters that they are beautiful princesses. Linda then goes to check on Jim who is in a bad mood. Linda explains that she thought she had put the stickers on the windows, and he wonders why she didn't. Jim doesn't believe her and claims she invited Joanne to stay for a few days to assist Linda, implying she's been acting strangely. Linda begins to cry and swear she is a good mother, but she is ignored. Linda eventually finds the yellow page in her pocket and throws it away. This makes her realize she's been living through everything she saw in her strange dreams, which means she's been seeing visions of the future and can use this information to influence the present. She grabs a pen and paper and creates a timeline of everything she knows, concluding that Jim will die in this timeline during her next business trip. Linda requests that Jim not accompany her on the trip, but Jim refuses, stating that their relationship requires some space. Linda awakens on the couch the next morning, and Joanne is still present. Linda returns to the timeline she created and adds more information, realizing Claire is another point of contention she needs to clarify. Linda visits Claire after leaving the girls with Joanne and admits to having an affair with Jim. Then she goes to see Annie to express her displeasure with the situation, but she also wonders if the accident was a good thing because Jim's affair could have destroyed the family. It only took a few hours, and her daughter's education was taken care of. Jim also left her an annuity. To her surprise, the banker says Jim was here before he left on the trip, looking nervous and wanting to make sure his family was okay without him. Linda then goes to observe the local lake for a moment of peace, and a man who lives nearby tells her that this is the ideal place to relocate to when you need to start over. Finally, she goes to to make funeral arrangements for Jim. Linda goes to bed in the evening with wine and Jim's shirt. Linda asks Joanne when she checks on her if letting Jim die is the same as killing him, but Joanne doesn't understand the question. Linda wakes Jim up the next morning and invites him to spend the day with the girls in the park. Meanwhile, she visits Father Kennedy to discuss her situation. Kennedy tells her about many cases of unexplained phenomena throughout history, and how they were regarded as dangers of the faithless because they came from people who had lost their faith and were desperate. Linda, in Kennedy's opinion, needs to focus on what is important in her life and fight for it, but Linda has no idea what she is fighting for. Linda then travels to mile 220, the location of Jim's accident. All of her visions rush to her mind and distract her to the point where she doesn't see a car approaching, but luckily she moves away just in time. Linda demands Jim tell the girls he loves them before they go to bed in the evening. Jim swears that he loves his daughters and wife more than anything else in the world. When Jim comes to check on Linda, she goes outside to get some fresh air, and an argument ensues. Linda wants things to be the same as they were before, but Jim is certain he is providing everything for the family and doesn't understand what she wants. Suddenly, lightning strikes a power line, killing the crow Linda discovers later in the timeline. Linda apologizes to Jim for her behavior as the couple runs back inside, and the two of them get frisky. When they're finished, Linda admits she dreamed about Jim's death, but Jim assures her that everything will be fine and that it was all a dream. Linda wakes up the next morning and panics when she doesn't see Jim. She calls Annie to confirm her timeline, then discovers a note from Jim saying he's dropping the girls off at school before leaving on his trip. Linda flees the house while calling Jim to stop her, but Jim is too preoccupied, first with the girls and then with going to the bank to finalize his family's finances. Jim's conversation with Linda last night sticks with him, and when he gets in his car to leave for the trip, he decides to call Claire and end their affair. Then he calls the house phone and leaves the message that Linda heard at the beginning of the story on the answering machine.
machine. When he hangs up because another call comes in, it is Linda herself calling him from her car because she is following him down the road in an attempt to stop him. Linda apologizes for everything and when Jim is about to confess the affair, Linda says she already knows and doesn't care, prompting Jim to promise they will begin working on their relationship more and start over properly. Jim notices Linda in the rearview mirror and pulls over to wait for her. Linda is getting ready for a reunion when she notices they are on mile 220, the location of the accident. She urgently tells Jim to turn the car around, and as soon as Jim moves, a car comes from the opposite direction, which thankfully Jim avoids. Linda is relieved to see that her husband is okay, but she appears to have forgotten that Riley mentioned the accident was caused by a truck. Jim tries to restart the car to get off the road, but the engine won't start, and then the infamous truck appears, crashing right into Jim's vehicle. Linda rushes to check on him, but before she can get any closer, both vehicles explode, and Linda collapses as she realizes the future cannot be changed. Many Many months later, when the moving trucks arrive to pick them up, the girls awaken Linda from her nap. Linda is relieved to see Bridget's scars have faded and recalls Kennedy telling her to fight for what is most important. What matters most right now is Linda's belly, because she is pregnant as a result of her last night with Jim.